new videos every day. Hi, I'm Radhi Aglis. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist, and if this is the first time you're joining us on this series, be sure you go to my website, advancedhealthinstitute.com, and download the metabolic assessment questionnaire next to any of the videos on the site. Fill it out and follow along to see if you have any of the metabolic imbalances we'll be talking about. You can go back through the Psyche Truth archives, just search Radia or How the Body Works series on this homepage and find and listen to other topics. The questionnaire looks at a variety of signs and symptoms that may have their root in nutritional imbalances and deficiencies. I use this questionnaire in conjunction with nutritional ranges in your blood test. So today we're on the last section, medications. If you um, have a need for these medications, you probably show the need for further investigation of the cause, not just the treatment of the symptom. And what kind of metabolic screening should be considered in order to check? So let's start with the list of typical meds the general public may be taking and then break them down one by one. So first of all, let's go, let's talk about antacids, uh, antibiotic antifungals antihistamines, antidepressants, uh, aspirin, Tylenol, anti-inflammatories, anxiety medication, diuretics, high blood pressure uh, medication, uh, high cholesterol uh, or me uh, medication for high cholesterol, uh, oral contra contraceptives, uh, hormone replacement, thyroid hormones, laxatives, uh, hydrocortisone creams and others. So let's start with antacids. Patients taking antacids need to be screened for hypochlorhydria. We talked about this in our first screen. Heliobacter pylori inoculation, parasite uh, inoculation, gastrointestinal IgA mediated food sensitivities, hypothalamus and pituitary hypofunction, uh, which alters the release of gastrins and reactive hypoglycemia, which causes the depletion of essential cofactors for hydrochloric acid production. It should be noted when patients take antacids uh, and alkalinize their gastrointestinal tract, the absorption of essential nutrients such as zinc, calcium, vitamin B12, and iron will be compromised. In addition to alterations in nutrient absorption, the alkalinizing effect of antacids also alters proper digestion by compromising the release of cholecystokinin, CCK. The end result of antacid consumption is improper digestion of food due to an inhibitory release of hydrochloric acid, pancreatic enzymes, and bile. So let's move on to antibiotics. Patients taking antibiotics need to be screened for healthy gastrointestinal immunity and dysbiosis, which means friendly flora. Um, supporting the body with beneficial bacteria should always be considered when taking antibiotics. Antifungals. Patients taking antifungals need to be screened for alterations in healthy immunity. Antifungals inhibit a steroid hormone enzyme, which will shut down the synthesis of DHEA, estrogen, and testosterone. Antihistamines. Patients that require antihistamines need to be screened for food sensitivities, hypochlorhydria, adrenal function, and essential fatty acid metabolism function. Let's move on to antidepressants. Patients taking antidepressants need to be screened for neurochemistry, thyroid imbalance, adrenal insufficiency, blood sugar disorders, and the need for serotonin cofactors such as 5-HTP, uh, ascorbic acid, vitamin B5, folic acid, iron and niacin, and the like. Insulin management agents, this would be for uh, diabetics and also for hypoglycemia. Patients taking medications to support proper clearance of glucose 
or diabetics who require insulin need to be screened for adrenal cortico uh, hyperfunction. These patients need nutritional support to maintain healthy insulin receptor sensitivity and response. The management of physiological inflammation and the proper intake of essential fatty acids in the diet needs to be considered. Now, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Patients taking anti-inflammatory agents, this would be Tylenol or aspirin, need to be screened for proper adrenal function, essential fatty acid metabolic defects, zinc needed, magnesium needed, or the need for vitamin B6. What about anxiety medications? Patients taking anxiety medications need to be screened for proper hypothalamus pituitary adrenal function, uh, B vitamin status, gastric reflux, hypochlorhydria, and a proper breakdown of the catecholamines. This is the fight or flight hormones that we've talked about in other series um, by methylation. Blood pressure lowering agents. Patients taking high blood pressure medications should be screened for adrenal gland hyperfunction, gastrointestinal dysfunction, food sensitivities, essential fatty acid deficiencies, magnesium need, etc. High blood pressure medications are categorized under diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. Now, what about cholesterol lowering agents? This would be like Lipitor. Um, patients with high cholesterol must be ruled out of hypothyroidism, uh, dysinsulinemia, gastrointestinal imbalances, and biliary stasis. Cholesterol lowering drugs can be divided into three main categories. HEM, uh, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, bile acid sequestering resins, and fibric uh, acid derivatives. Patients taking HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors will have a need uh, to be supplemented with CoQ10. Patients taking bile acid sequestering res resins longer than two months will require biliary support. They may also require fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and vitamin K. Patients taking fibric acid derivatives may develop gallstones. Okay, oral contraceptives. Patients taking oral contraceptives need to be evaluated for thyroid underconversion and estrogen dominance. These patients should be advised to optimize estrogen metabolism, which may help reduce estrogen dominance risk. These patients may also require a supplement to help T4 and T3 conversion that is compromised with exogenous hormone intake. If you can't remember what T3, T4 is, re refer back to the episode on thyroid. We covered that already. Patients taking oral contraceptives will in, uh, induce deficiencies in B12, folic acid, B6, and should be placed on those supplements. And finally, hormones. Patients taking hormones uh, needed to need to have the optimal liver and biliary support function to conjugate and eliminate hormones. For more information on all of this and metabolic screenings, go to my website, advancedhealthinstitute.com, and take a look at my short video on blood nutrition. And don't forget to do the free metabolic assessment questionnaire. Well, that's all for today. Be sure if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to Psyche Truth, and I'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.